Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. And you know what? It says in the intro, we're going to revolutionize the way you think about business. We are going to do that today. I'm, I'm calling my shot right now. We're talking a little bit before we start recording here about what, what is the one thing entrepreneurs give up the most that we also want the most? Time and money. We're going to unpack that today. And we're going to go into you know why we're probably all doing it wrong, at least we are in the beginning, and how to get out of that rut and fix it, get to the other side of actually being a business owner. Enough of me babbling. I have an amazing guest with us today, Kevin Hoover. Before we go any further, Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Brandon. It's such a pleasure. So this is a big topic, right? Really, the topic we're going to talk about is the three buckets that every entrepreneur needs to fill in their business to be able to leverage and scale. But it kind of comes back to that conversation of, of time and money. So I'm curious, before we dive in specifically to that, can you identify for me what are these three big buckets that every entrepreneur needs to have a handle on? Absolutely. Quite simply, lead generation, sales, and fulfillment. And if you're in business, you know, if you have a problem with one of those buckets, either there's enough people coming into the pipeline and you're you're closing the deals and then you may have some time management on your hands or or something, something of that nature. But those are the three big buckets I see. And if we focus on those three, we can find our problem very easily. Yeah. I mean, at, at its at the high level, that's very easy to picture, right? I mean, if yeah. you are lacking in any one area, I think of it like balancing the three buckets, right? Like if any one is more full than the other one, it's really hard to carry that load. So where do we start by saying, okay, let's say I do have a problem in leads or in fulfillment. We identify it. What's what's the next step? Because I think a lot of people are really good at identifying their problems, the mm -hmm. surface level problems at least. But then there's always confusion or that's when we start to see the noise in the marketplace, like the three pieces of software you need to solve all your lead problems. And it's all garbage. So help me unpack right. this. Where, <laughs> what do we do once we identified, air quotes, the problem? Well, I think I think that's where you really have to get honest. And I think that's the thing that we don't like to do with ourselves, no matter what area of life you're talking about. You know, we always say, I'm not that out of shape. I'm not that bad. I'm not that old. I'm not that anything. And so I think we have to get really honest with ourselves in business. And so if we use the lead generation as the as the example, you know, it could be a, a, a number of things in that. It could be that you're getting enough client attraction or enough attraction, but it's the wrong leads. It's not the it's not the people you want. And they're exhausting you and they're 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 creating a tougher sales cycle and then they're creating a tougher fulfillment cycle and that's why you feel burnt out it's because you're attracting the wrong people into your business so if, if leads are the problem there's a few things in there that could be the issue it could be this the wrong avatar it's the wrong clients they're not paying enough they're paying way too much their expectation there's there's a multitude of things in there but if leads are the problem ultimately it comes back down to a couple of ideas and the ideas are you know um, have you niche down and people get a little bit picky about that phrase niching down they get a little bit like ooh i don't want to limit my business and then when you think about it it's like you know the way i explain niching i say the only reason to niche down is so that your marketing works if you want your marketing to work you've got to kind of get to know the people you're talking to and so lead, leads being the problem you would really go in there and say okay is my am i aiming at the right target are these the people i want to work with is this my ideal or is there a little bit of gray area overlap, inconsistency, sort of vagueness in my marketing that might attract people who are not ready for me yet or not ready for my business yet or ready for what I do, or um, maybe they, they, they're they not willing to solve the problem that I solve. And so I think that is really the, the, the thing. What do, what do I do next is you have to dig so deep into the problem that the truth is there for you. And and it could be that, wow, I've I've created a niche that doesn't have the problem I solve, or I've I've gone into the the realm of attracting people that just really exhaust me to work with, or I'm not really solving the thing that I do pretty easily and quickly. And that can create a lot of problems down the line. You know, fulfillment becomes a problem when the lead generation is a problem. And that, that just, it just flows in that, in that way. So I think, I think the next thing to do is once you've identified that problem, you said, okay, my problem is in the lead generation bucket. I might not be getting enough leads. Great. What is the reason for that? The reason for that is probably that you're not resonating on a level 
of the people actually identifying that you help the problem they have. You know, if if time is the problem and you're not just displaying that in your marketing, um, they may miss the boat altogether. So I think that that really is the hard part about it is once we identify that problem, getting to the point of truth and honesty on it. Of why is this a problem for my business? Um, and sometimes, you know, if you've got a bigger company or a bigger business, it could be like, wow, we hired the wrong marketing person. Or it could be, wow, I partnered with the wrong person. Or it could be that I'm in the wrong business altogether. There's a, a vertical in business I should be focused on. And so I think I think that is really, you know, identifying the problem generally comes pretty quickly and pretty painlessly. The next step is where it gets really sticky and it gets really like, you know, once your doctor says, hey, you, you need to lose 10 pounds or this outcome. The next step is the hardest because you've actually got to get on the treadmill and start eating kale. And, <laughs> and those are the two things that we don't want to do that. We don't want to get on the treadmill. We don't want to eat kale. But what's the other option that, you know, you, you and I have been around the block time enough to know that, you know, the, the magic wonder pill is not going to be sustainable. So you actually have to move your body and you actually have to consider what you eat. And you actually have to sleep and you actually have to do all these things that will prevent the outcome your doctors told you is going to come. So same thing in business. When we get to that point of saying, here's the problem, here's sort of the outcome we see coming. If we don't fix it, the next step is we got to get on the channel. You know, interesting analogy, because uh, I, I did both of those things today and I happen to like them now. But a few years ago, when my doctor first told me that I did not like them. Not um, so do. kale, I will. I'll just be fully transparent. I didn't have kale. I have usually spinach or like a, a spring mix. Kale's a little weird. It has its place, but it's a little weird. Agreed. Um, but <laughs> when you start to do those things, you actually fall more in love with the process and then the long-term outcome than just saying the, you know, looking at the sacrifice, if you will, of the treadmill and kale. So yeah. talk to me about this process, because this, I think, is what keeps people stuck in that operator role, not the owner role. And we give away our time freedom and our financial freedom as business owners as a result. So how do we start to look at, you know, building what I like to say is we build a process so that the treadmill and the kale, we're just going to roll with this analogy because I love it. We build a process so that the treadmill and the kale are inevitable and, and they're kind of side effects of mm -hmm. what we're doing as in running our business. So can you walk me through kind of that process? Because going from just focusing on, I have to do this rather than, no, this is just part of the process, kind of a distraction even because I even mm -hmm. have to do that. That to me is the easiest way to grow a business. Absolutely. And, and I think we're, you know, I, don't, I can't speak for you or anyone else, but I can speak for me. I've never fallen in love with kale nor a treadmill. And I'm an avid, I, I do yoga every day. I, I, I work out because I'm 50 and I, it's kind of, you have to do that, you know, but I, I'm not in love with the process. I'm in love with the outcome. And so when the outcome, when, when the results start to show up, it's much easier for me to say, I've got to do this to keep this outcome. So if you're in business, that would be money and time. Those would be the two wins that we get, the results that we get. So when you go back to the, the things that really build your business, it's like create the niche. What is the niche? Go back to that, visit that. You know, if lead generation is your problem, go back to that niche and where it may seem elementary and it may seem, you know, kind of two steps back. You've got to go back to that. You know, no one, no, no doctor is out there teaching you how to run. They're assuming you know how to do it, that you can go back to first grade and go, remember when your teacher used to say, go take a lap around the field or whatever was the case or run at first base or run away from the monster or whatever you were playing as a kid. No one's teaching you how to do the thing. It's, it's assumed that you know how to do it. So if you're in business, I, you, we would assume that you have a niche and some marketing and some products and some offers and you talk about it and all that stuff. But if you go back to that niche and then you go back to your message and go back to your offer and go back to that foundational Thing. You may need to relearn how to do that and integrate that in your daily life so that you get the results. You know, if you're revisiting your offer every week or the, the thing that you're bringing to the market and you ask yourself questions, honest questions around it, is this still serving the people that I serve? Is this still relevant? Has technology made this irrelevant in any way? You know, if you're constantly visiting that, it's just like, you know, I love this analogy. So if we go to the treadmill and you're like, wow, I run for 30 minutes. And then I walk for 10 and then one day you get on there and after 10 minutes, you're like, I don't think I can run anymore. But you keep walking and you keep moving and you keep going. You just stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. You're going to get some results. So I think the if the results are what we fall in love with and we're looking for those results, sometimes you have to go back to the beginning and just do it in baby steps. 
and ask yourself if you've niffed down far enough. Is your messaging off in any way? Are you talking to the avatar you created? Are you talking to the reason you started the business? Are you sharing your origin story? Are you sharing your, the real problems that you overcome and the challenges? And then, um, and that kind of leads you to this path. But once you get those results, you know, if if, if everyone gave, um, if you had a hundred thousand dollars to spend on marketing this year, and you knew out of that hundred k, you were going to generate. 500k in revenue, it would be really easy to write that check. But if you had 100k for marketing and you said, "Oh, I hope this works," there would be pause in that writing that check. So the results are really what we're aspiring to, you know. And, and that stays with us throughout the life of our business. We always want those results, and the results move and change and evolve and all that stuff. But that really is what we what we fall in love with, and it's really easy to do something when someone compliments you on your appearance at a party and they're wow you look amazing what have you been doing like you're going to get up the next day and work out 100 percent, right you're not going to not do that so the same in business if clients are coming to you and they're paying you and you're you feel like it's a fair trade financially and the time and it's not exhausting you're not burning out your team is happy all of that you're going to keep doing the thing that works and if you just keep assessing that you'll keep evolving the business and that's tough waters to swim in but it's also what we choose as entrepreneurs i think yeah. Now here's the, I guess the tough side of this conversation, because I've seen this both in business and at the gym, ironically, uh, myself included, I'm, I'm totally guilty of this in both regards. You have the treadmill and kale and you're a psycho and you do those things every day. You get the results, you go to the party and the people start to compliment you and the compliments start to come more and more often. Same thing in business. You have the money, you have the time, you're going on vacation more, you're more unplugged from your business. Then something happens. We get lazy. We stop doing those things that got us here in the first mm -hmm. place. And we stop trying to be better and we fall into a rut. And this personally, again, happened in both scenarios. I, this happens with our clients. That's typically why they're coming to us. Uh, and I've seen it at, at the gym that I go to. Then we fall back. We take a step backwards and we, it's twice as hard to get back to that where we were than it was the first time. What do we need to be doing as business owners, as uh, treadmill and kale eaters to make sure that we're consistently focused on these things and we make sure it's not it's not on us as the leader? Because I think that kind of negates the time freedom piece. If you have to be the mm -hmm. one carrying the torch and, and driving the boat, you're never going to have that time freedom, no matter how much money you have. So how do we make sure our businesses are always doing this so that we don't have to go back and forth constantly? I think it's um, the complacency is definitely a big problem. You know, you get to a certain level, especially, you know, money's coming in pretty consistently, sometimes on autopilot. Um, I don't I don't think it's really considered passive because you have to have to still work the money angle um, in some way. But, you know, I think that's where you have to recheck in yourself. And, and a lot of times I think it's this is where I think it gets a little tricky, because in that situation, I find that business is not the problem. Life is the problem. Right. And so. Um, I'll share a personal story. I spent 18 months traveling with my family in an RV working my business. I worked three days a week from the RV. We traveled across. I live on the East Coast. We traveled to the West Coast and back 28,000 miles over 18 months. It was amazing. It was amazing. Right. Life was exciting enough that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would sit in a beautiful spot and go to work. And the reason for that is the life outside of that office, so to speak, was so important that I was focused on running a full-time business, working part-time hours from Key West, from Zion National Park, from, from all these amazing spaces that we wanted to go. And so you have to find that motivation. And, and that's really where it comes, just like we were, were talking about earlier, you know, if, you're, if you value that, that your time outside of your work enough and you're doing enough with it and you're not, being, uh, you're not breaking your body down, you're not breaking your mind down, you're not in a ton of bad habits, um, you're being there for your family, the people you care about, the people you love um, and and yourself. And you're living what you would consider a, a healthy, healthy lifestyle as far as your mindset, your mental health, your physical health. That typically plays a role. Normally, when people find that complacency, it's because of what they're doing on Saturday has become so unimportant that Wednesday is also now not important. And I think when you when you wake up Wednesday and you say, I'm really looking forward to X, Y, Z on Saturday with these people or with myself or with, you know, then you've got to get your stuff done on Wednesday. 
you know, and so I, th I think I really believe that's it. You know, I, I work with a lot of C-suite folks, a lot of high level entrepreneurs. And when they come with burnout or they come with complacency or anything like that, the first thing I do is I look at their their life. How how much are you sleeping? You know, it's, it's an irrational thought to say I got exactly what I wanted and I hate it. It's just not rational. I, I set out, I left corporate to build this business and to have time and money. And now I've got time and money and I'm using my time in a way I don't like to use my time. And so I, th I think when we really get to that and you start creating a life that reinforces the reason that you work, it's a lot tougher to get complacent. But when you're just kind of coasting through life, you know, you get off work at four or five o'clock, six o'clock, whenever you get off work and all you're doing is waiting to go to sleep so you can wake up the next day and do it again. Like that's there's we've got a there's a disconnect in why you're doing this. You know, you could probably do that and be happy working for someone else, not really running your own thing. So. I really think that that's where the line between being an entrepreneur because of the little magic boxes that we all carry in our pockets and allow connectivity all the time. There's no line between our business and our life until there is. And so the I think that I, I find that the complacency in business is just a simple way of saying I'm no longer satisfied with the bigger picture of life. And we've got to look at where the disconnect might be. You know, again, it's that outcome. I will get on the treadmill if I know I'm going to a dinner party Saturday. And my buds are going to be like, you look amazing. What's going on with you? What are you doing? Oh, that feels good at my age. It feels good, at, you know, to, I mean, at any age, really. But also, I want people to do that about my business. You know, how are, how are you living your life? How do you get to go all these places? And how do you get, how are you paying for this? You know, this was the question most people ask. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I, I just, I said, well, I've designed my life first. And then I built a business that supports that. And then that can go up and down. You know, my son's nine. He's in school. So now we're finishing up school. So I haven't been really like outliving what I would consider a really exciting lifestyle for the last few months, but summer's coming. We'll be out of school. You know, what are we going to do there? And that's exciting, but I have to work now for July, you know? So I, I think that, I think that's it. Complacency sets in when there's an unplugging in some way. And some people find it in their marriages. Some people find it in their, their kids grow up, you know, empty nest syndrome. Some people find it at retirement. Some people find it that they a lot of people find it actually where they left a situation in the in corporate where they didn't want to be. The leadership was wrong or anything or the company was going down a, a weird path or something like that. They start their own business and they create exactly what they left and they become the boss they didn't like. They become the company they didn't care for. And now they're leading a team that feels the way they felt. And that on the subconscious level will just grade at us and create dissatisfaction. And so I think if you're really, if you're in a complacency and you're saying, I'm not no longer motivated to do my business, um, look at your life. Where are you no longer willing to full potential your life? And are you coasting? Cause you only coast one way. And if you're coasting in your life, you're going to coast in your business. Yeah. And that, that's just, I found that to be true so many times. It's alarming. Yeah, no, it definitely resonates, especially with my past too. I'm thinking of that and it, it begs the question, uh, I don't want to touch your buckets because they're your buckets, but is there a fourth bucket of purpose? And, you know, if we're not in line with that, that purpose, it doesn't really matter what the rest of your business is doing, because if, if it's not fulfilling you and it's not fulfilling your God given purpose on this planet, you just won't chase it but not only you like your employees too i fully mm -hmm. believe that you need to build a holistic organization they need to be just as fulfilled as you do so uh you tell me that your buckets they're not mine but uh should we have a fourth one um i, I see where you're coming from and i agree the here's the thing that will might shift that a little bit you know mm -hmm. so when we look at these buckets and we we say okay what's in these buckets you know so we got the buckets lead gen sales fulfillment what's in these buckets people these buckets are full of people and everyone in the entrepreneur space. If your purpose is not people, you're going to miss hundred percent of the time. Yep. You will miss. And so when you look at lead generation you say, okay, lead generation, is my problem. And then you dive deeper and you say, well, what's in that bucket? Well, that's a bunch of people that I've collected through my freebie, through my marketing, through my going to the street corner and saying, Hey, I do this thing, you know, whatever, however you're filling that bucket. But then you look at that, that bucket and you say, wow, these are all people in here. Let's connect deeper. What do these people need? What, why did they come here? Why did they say yes? Why did they opt in? Why did they, you know, what is it that they brought to the table? If you're not feeling a sense of purpose that people are saying, I like what you're doing and I'd like to know more, you've got a problem, not the business, right? If you're looking at sales and saying, wow, these people are saying, I like what you're doing. I'd like to know more. And then I get there and they go, yeah, okay, not for me. 
right? We're not, we're now not serving the people who've said yes. And we're not communicating our business on a level that makes them want to buy our thing or buy our, buy our solution. And so, and then same in fulfillment. If fulfillment is draining you, imagine what it's doing to your clients. Just imagine mm-hmm. if going through your fulfillment process, meaning your delivery of your brand promise, if going through that exhausts you as the founder, imagine what it's doing to the people who bought it. They're probably seeing minimal results. They're probably feeling unfulfilled. So I think when we zoom out and say, is, is, should there be a fourth bucket? Probably. I agree with you. Probably. But then if we say, okay, well, we're going to fill all these buckets with people and we're going to serve those people. If you're not finding purpose in that, please go take a job somewhere. <laughs> Just bold. I can't say it any other way, like boldly, because I think we we all have to consider, you know, we want time and money, but we also want to help people. And that's why we create these solutions. And so that I think that should be the next thing that we consider. If our marketing is not working, it's because we're not talking to people. You know, we're not re- we're not relating on on a level at all. And thus our leads will be down, our sales will be down, our fulfillment won't be a problem at all. Yeah, I think that's brilliant advice. And that's that's absolutely spot on. I mean, for for us personally, like we don't even if you come to us and you say you're you're only in this to make more money, we don't take you on as a client. We only work with people who are impact driven, mission motivated, because First of all, we know they're going to get the results. Uh, yeah. Second of all, we know they're in it for the right thing. If business is about human beings, just like you said, um, I, I love that philosophy. So um, you have a way to hear more about this because I think we could unpack this conversation for hours. And unfortunately, on this podcast, we don't have that kind of time. But um, I put your website on the screen. It's also in the show notes wherever you're watching and listening, mynextcrest.com. And you have a, a free mastermind for the listeners if they want to join you. Can you talk about that for a second? Absolutely. Every month I do a, it's a 90 to 120 minute free training questions are answered. There's a training topic that I come in with. So I come in with a specific point. It's all around business. So we, we try not to talk too much about feelings, even though I'm a very feely feelings guy, you know, human being, but um, it's really a strategy, how to grow social media strategy. The one we just did was about social media strategy, how to present your brand on social media so that it breaks the noise. Um, so we do that and it, it's Q and A It's totally free. All you have to do is trade me your email um, so that I can send you the link and we meet and you have to register to be there. And it's all like-minded people. And, um, I try to weed out any people who might not be on the level pretty quick so that we're all kind of elevating each other. And it's, it's a load of fun, but totally free. I, I, I use it as a no pitch zone. So you're not coming into a webinar or a like, but now buy my stuff. Now that you've seen this, it's just no questions asked free stuff every month. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds like a fair trade for an email address. I love it. Um, so Kevin, I have, I have one last question. I thank you for being here, but, uh, this, the purpose of this show for me, if you could tell from looking behind me, I love questions. I have a giant upside down question mark on my little, on my wall. And we believe at at what if powerful questions get powerful answers. And that's really what we want for everybody listening to the show. Our clients, if you're a client or not, is how can we move your business forward and how can we get you bigger and better results than you've gotten in the past, hopefully with less effort at the same time. So From this conversation, uh, what would you want the listener to walk away with? And and what's that question you want them to think about for their business for the rest of today, if not the rest of the week, to help them move their business forward? The one question I would think this is a great, this is such a great way to end the show, by the way. I love love the question. The question I would consider every founder, every entrepreneur to ask um, of themselves and of their business and of their teams is does this require the amount of time we're allocating? Does this, any task, checking email, the meeting, the board meeting, the sales talk, the going to the conference, does this require the amount of time we're allocating to do it? What you'll find is that you're allocating way too much time to do something that takes a couple hours of 15 minutes. And I learned that personally. I I was allocating eight hours a day, 10 hours a day to do something that took three and a half. Mm. Yeah, that's a powerful question. That's the one resource we don't get more of is time. You can always make more money. You can always hire more people, buy more things. You can't buy more time. So I I love that question. Kevin, thank you for being a fantastic guest on Harmonious at Lunch. Oh, thank you for having me. It was such an honor. For those of you watching and listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe. We love bringing this show to you every single day of the week to get you outside of that box that you find yourself in and help you grow your business 20 minutes at a time. Every little bit will help. So start thinking about that question. Think about how much time you're spending in your business. And can we get you out of your business and be the owner, not the operator? We'll see you on the next episode of Harmony.